Hi, so just letting you know what you're about to watch, this is going to be five videos that were originally intended to be posted on their own, but people, I think some people were getting kind of annoyed with, uh, it's sort of flooding their feed with so many different videos, which I understand, so uh, in hindsight, I probably should have clumped them together already, clumping them together now, so we're just going to go with groups of five of the top ten, so if you notice any weird editing uh, from video to video, that's mostly going to be the reason why, so just be on the lookout for that, but anyways, uh, let's get into the next five on this list. To round out the 70s, Dallas Goddard makes this list someone who is really one of the real underrated players in the NFL, in my opinion. You look at his box score statistics, and certainly last year was his best statistical year with 830 yards, which is very impressive from a tight end, but he's been a consistent sort of 500 plus guy before that, and not to mention he was sharing time with Zach Ertz, so now that he's kind of really been the tight end one, he has flourished in that role. You look at his pro football focus grades, they're not crazy about his uh, blocking necessarily, but they do. Are, they are crazy about his receiving grade. Uh, he had the second best receiving grade out of tight ends last season. We've also seen him do this for several years now, He's cons and he's consistently gotten better. You know, 2020 and 2019, about the same, uh, but he had a big jump from 2018, and then he had another big jump last year and I continue I expect to see him continue to grow this play is a great example of what makes Goddard just so deadly where it's going to be a man coverage play and he's going up against a linebacker and these are just the situations that you want to avoid if you're a defense going up against him but that's always the dilemma right you put a cornerback against him well then he can just overpower that guy you put a linebacker against him well then this happens right when this play begins you see Goddard just kind of faking as though he's running closer towards the middle kind of like as though he's trying to get the left towards the inside but that is not what he is doing that is just a fake watch him sidestep the linebacker and he's just going to be able to blow wide, way by him because he's just fast enough to do so and then absorbs the contact that the safety uh, tried to make there and gets into the end zone for a touchdown kind of a great example of both of what makes him incredible he's the classic tight end of fast enough to burn your linebackers and big enough that corners can't you know cover him that way the reason why I have him so high is because he is such a fantastic receiving threat. And if we were just talking about last year, he would probably be, you know, maybe even like a top like 20 player in football. But we are not just talking about last year. We're talking about what I think he will do next year. And I don't know if he is entirely that guy or if maybe that was just his first year being that guy. There is still a bit of a smaller sample size of it, you know, at play. But he's fantastic and definitely deserves a spot on this list. Coming here at a nice number 69, I am going with Michael Onwenu, who is the do-it-all offensive lineman for the New England Patriots. You look at his pro football focus page, and it is impressive. I mean, he was considered a guard last year and was the third best guard in football, according to PFF grade, with an 86.7 grade, and his grade was only a couple points lower in 2020. So he's played def different positions, but he can play different positions very effectively. The only real negative you have on this resume so far is the fact that we've only seen him for two seasons and he only had about, about 650 snaps. You would like to see that be a little bit more, but other than that, uh, this is an impressive resume. As for the film, something like this is a good example of what him along with the entire Patriots offensive line can do well. So you would think, starting off on this play, that is the player that on when you would be blocking. However, the player who he's expecting to block is going to be running closer to the inside, which in itself isn't a big deal, but there's a stunt going on. Demario Davis for the Saints is going to roll around like that, try to get to the left side of on when you, and because of this, if on when if on when you gets you know bites too hard on that initial play, this could be disaster for New England. Instead, really quickly, he's able to get off that, you know, get out of that situation and quickly look over to be able to block uh, Demario Davis right here, which puts him just in a very good situation. As you see, Davis tries to use footwork to get by on one U because he's not going to be able to use power, but that didn't work either. On one U has football IQ, he has footwork, and he has power, and he can play everywhere. He's a fantastic offensive lineman for the New England Patriots and fits in really well. That is why he is on this list here at 69. Here at 68 comes in a man who was considered a cast off at one point from the Buffalo Bills, was traded for peanuts and has been one of the best guards in football for the past two seasons. This is Wyatt Teller's pro football focus page and you see how 2018, not so great. 2019, not so great. All right, he's looking like a fringe NFL talent. 
All of a sudden, he comes over to Cleveland, and in 2020, he was the highest-graded player, according to Pro Football Focus, and in 2021, the fifth-highest-graded guard, uh, so not player, but guard for PFF, which is certainly very impressive from a fifth-round selection. His consistency is definitely key. He does not get beat too often, especially in the run game. His running game is spectacular, but I think his passing game is good too. Like, for example, this play, what you're going to see is that it's a relatively simple play. This isn't one of the more highlight real level plays that, you know, we've talked about on other plays, but I think it's still a fantastic play where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block and watch what happens. As you see, Teller does do an incredible job of just being able to win his one-on-one -on -one block easily. He got the hand placement where he needed and had no issue, and that's kind of just what he does. It's not a fantastic play, but he just does this stuff consistently, and consistency is key in the NFL, and he's so remarkably consistent, at least he has been these past two years, that that's why I decided to put him on this list and put him relatively high on this list. I couldn't put him any higher because it is still, you have to wonder, you know, is he a product of playing for a good Browns offensive line? There's an argument to be made about that just because he didn't look great with Buffalo, but at the same time, he has looked so good that I'm still willing to put him on this list, and he plays for the Browns, so he plays in the system that works, so I'm willing to sort of bet on the upside with Wyatt Teller, but that's why I have him where I have him. Here at 67, we have the longtime veteran of the Philadelphia Eagles, Jason Kelsey, who is still playing at a very high level despite being 34. If you look at his extensive pro football focus page, it's not that he's been fantastic every year, but he's been fan he's been fantastic for a lot of years. Played over a thousand snaps last year and was pro football focus's third highest graded center. So all that stuff is very good. Uh, you see that, you know, his 84.5 grade is not even his best grade. In 2017, he was better. In 2018, he was better. Uh, saw a bit of a dip in 2020, according to the grade, but then right back to form in 2021. So he's been fantastic and still is playing at a high level. Like, for example, you have something like this. This is just a remarkable play by Kelsey. This is fantastic. It's flashy. It's fun. Watch what's going to happen. You typically don't see remarkable highlight real level plays from a center. This is a remarkable highlight real level play. So first, it starts off simple. You're blocking the guy who's in front of you. Simple enough. As you see, Kelsey does a good job at doing that. But you also notice that in that black box, there are three players. Kelsey, the guy Kelsey's blocking, and a third player who's going to try to twist around, get to the right side of the screen, and block Kelsey. What does Kelsey do here? First, he has to notice this because his head is down. So the fact that he notices this is already kind of impressive. But how do you go about making this block? Well, as you see, Kelsey just pulls off a swim move and is able to make that block and allow the Eagles just enough time to get the ball off and get a touchdown there. I mean, that's that's just fantastic. That's great stuff. It looks silly when it doesn't work out, but it worked out. And that was a fantastic play from Jason Kelsey. He's someone who, again, it's a right now list. And maybe your concern is that, Will the age keep up with him? My criteria is simply how good will you be next season? But if he plays anything like he played last season, he maybe even could be higher on this list. So he certainly belongs on the list. And that is why he placed where he did here at 67. At number 68, I am going with a free agent. The only free agent to make this list, it is JC Treader. You look at Treader's PFF grade and it's going to make you wonder why in the world this, is this guy still a free agent? Why is our team's not, you know, lining up the Brinks truck to get him in? Because he has been fantastic. Uh, 87.7 overall grade with an 83.7 pass blocking grade as a center. Very good pass blocking center who can absolutely stop, uh, you know, help block in the running game as well. This play is a great example of what he is able to do a lot of times with a center. So you see he is, you know, I put him in the black box there. He is a center. And with five guys who could be rushing the passer, you typically would know where to expect all five of your offensive linemen to block. What I'm The reason why I'm showing this play is to show off his football IQ, which, at you know, right now you might be wondering, well, how can you do that? Isn't this a very easy read for everyone to make? Well, yes, but it's going to get more complex. Watch how right when this play begins, you notice that the bear who was lined up against Wyatt Teller, the right guard, is now going to start to swing around towards the left side of the screen. So this is where things get complex. Is Teller going to be able to you know, follow him all the way over there? Well, no, that's difficult. There's a lot of people in the way. Things can go wrong. You don't want to do that. So what do you do here if you're Treader? If you noticed 
Memphis. What is your plan here? You can't, you know, g just go over and block him either. What do you do? Well, first, he's going to pass off the guy he's blocking to Wyatt Teller. So now he can get off of his block because there's someone else blocking the guy who he was supposed to block at the beginning of this play. But now what do you do? Again, you can't just go over there. You still have someone all the way in your way on your left. So he's now going to help out his left guard, which now puts him in a position where the left guard can go over and block that Chicago player. As you see, everyone ends up making their blocks, and that gives the Browns time to make this play. Just a very well-done play on a really, I think, you know, clever uh, concept by Chicago. They really fooled them a little bit with that twist. But despite the fact that they were fooled, they knew exactly what to do and were able to execute flawlessly. So that's one of the things that's always going to be good about a center if you're smart. And he can also make his blocks well and block guys one-on-one. -on -one. So all of that put together, he definitely belongs a spot on this list. He comes in at 68.